probably operating with a similar point of view in that there's a sort of set of fundamentally flawed assumptions that we're operating on and a kind of uh, terminally creaky design for unleashing human potential, whether you're talking about business organizations or government mm -hmm. or parents and families mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> or, or uh, social institutions. So set up the problem for me. What, what have we got really wrong when it comes to how we understand what makes people tick and what makes them soar? We've, we've totally oversold the effectiveness of carrots and sticks. We, we basically say there's this universal remedy for things, that, that people are, human beings are essentially semi-sophisticated robots, and if you simply press the right lever in the right way, they'll respond in a way that you want, in a way that's predictable. And that just isn't true. Um, it's fundamentally not true. And then when we think about these kinds of motivational mechanisms of carrots and sticks, this idea that you can if you incentivize the performance you want, that's what you'll get. If you disincentivize the performance you don't want, that will happen. That uh, turns out to be, as you say, Polly, fundamentally flawed. It is true some of the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean there are many, many instances where you know these if-then motivators, the carrot and stick motivators, can be effective. But it's a surprisingly narrow band of circumstance, and this is not this kind of you know, philosophical view. It's basically we have 50 years of social science that, that tells us this, and it's 50 years of social science that is not entirely, but is largely uh, ignored, and ignored in favor of folklore about what motivates people. So you, I mean, you make this point so searingly clear in your book and, and other forums that, so this is 50 years of social science, but social science and what we know and what we've learned and what we continue to learn does not match up to what we do inside organizations. So what is it about this moment in time mm. that makes that shift yeah. Yeah. so urgent from motivation 2.0 to 3.0 from organizations yeah. 1.0 to 2.0 essentially I think the shift is how do we design work structure organizations harness human potential in a way that goes with the grain of humanity as yeah. opposed oh, to nice. against yeah. it yeah. so yeah. why now why is yeah. it important now huh, it's an interesting question I, I, my, my hunch is I would say there probably are two reasons that might be semi-connected uh, the first is that the nature of what people actually do has changed. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, very few people in the white collar workforce are doing algorithmic or rule based work. That kind of work has become a commodity in the same way that routine blue collar work became a commodity. And um, so the, the work that people are doing is. A psychologist would call heuristic. It requires creativity. It requires conceptual thinking. It doesn't follow a recipe. It doesn't conform to an algorithm. And so I think that's a big change. And, and basically, the science shows that if-then rewards don't work for that kind of work. The other thing is, and something that you've written about and talked about, is um, just I think the nature in who has the balance of power uh, in, between individuals and organizations. That is today. I think in any kind of enterprise, individuals need organizations less than organizations need individuals. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, here you are interviewing me on a high definition video camcorder that you're carrying around in your pocket. Okay, now, not that long ago, in order to do a high quality video, you would have to have a giant camera and probably another person to operate it. And here you have for a couple hundred bucks you carry it around in your pocket. You know, right next to you, just to reveal what's happening behind the scenes here, <laughs> is a is a is a phone. A you know, a phone. And that mobile phone has more computing power in it than existed in the world mm -hmm. fifty years ago. And so you know, because of that, you know, individuals need organizations less than organizations need individuals. So if an organization wants an individual, they're going to have to do it, treat that individual in a way, to use your phrase, that goes with the grain of humanity rather than against it.